Yes, I think there's literally no good reason to become a Mormon. And if you're just here for the quick answer, pretty much, as long as you're not a Mormon apostate, you're going to go to heaven. The only people that go to hell are Mormon apostates, so don't become a Mormon because then you won't be an apostate. You could be a Christian, you could be secular, you could be an atheist, you could be a Muslim, and still go to heaven, technically. If you want a more in-depth answer, stick around. All right, so this is a chart explaining pretty much the entire life of a person according to Mormonism. I'm gonna go through all the different parts of it real quick and explain to you why becoming a Mormon is, there's, there's no reason to do that. So we start in the top left corner with the first estate, the realms of deity and the pre-mortal life. I'm just gonna skip to the pre-mortal life because the rest of it is kind of convoluted. The pre-mortal life is a pre-existence where everybody exists spiritually. There is God, or maybe you should say a God, and his spirit goddess wives. They have relations with one another, gestate for nine months, and have spirit children, billions and billions of them. So the spirit children cross over this veil and are joined with flesh and blood into an actual person that lives on earth. So then we get to the second estate, which is where everybody that's alive and exists lives now. You can choose to be a Mormon and go on the straight and narrow way, which is the top line there. You can go the middle way, which is the broad way. That would be likely other religious people. It says here, the good and honorable, but blinded by craftiness of men. Uh, the low way would be the dishonest, liars, sorcerers, adulterers, and whoremongers, and we'll get to that. And then lastly, the last place, it's called the outer darkness here, but it's essentially hell, and the only people that go there are apostates. By the way, apostate means you leave Mormonism. So the celestial kingdom, the terrestrial kingdom, and the telestial kingdom are all parts of heaven. There are different levels of heaven. Um, because in the Bible, Paul says that there's three levels of heaven, but the Mormons have taken this to mean something different. So the celestial kingdom is where it's the top part of heaven. It's where God and Christ live. Technically, I know this is all very convoluted, but anybody who is a Mormon who follows what the gospel law says uh, through faith, repentance, baptism, and the Holy Ghost, you do good works, chastity, tithing, you're, you have words of wisdom, and you get to the celestial kingdom. The thing about the celestial kingdom, though, is it's not just a heaven like we see in the Bible where you worship God for eternity. In the celestial kingdom, you become a god. The center there, you see with the number one, uh, the arrow that's pointing to that says temple marriage. The most important thing, it seems, for a Mormon is to get married, and it's not just a marriage like everybody else says, where it's till death do you part. If you get married in the temple, in a Mormon temple, you have a marriage bond that lasts not till death, but literally through eternity. So you become a God. Yes, I said a God, because according to Mormonism, God was once a man, and then he followed the gospel law and became a God. So if you do what he did, you become a God. You have spe your spirit wife and you get to have spirit children for eternity and she gets the blessing of being pregnant for eternity. Wonderful. With the terrestrial kingdom, it's a lesser heaven. Um, good and honorable people go here. And I guess that would include Christians, Muslims, atheists, whatever, as long as you are a good and honorable person. Um, this graphic doesn't tell what a good and honorable person is. And maybe Mormonism doesn't really either. I'm not really sure. But the part that I wanted to get to is the low way. Here it says the dishonest, liars, sorcerers, adulterers, and whoremongers. But remember, the only people that go to hell are apostates of Mormonism, which means, you guessed it, all of the most evil people in history, as long as they weren't Mormons, are still in heaven. The Telestial Kingdom includes the likes of Pol Pot, Hitler, Stalin. Do you see the problem here? If we're talking about a religion where you earn your way to heaven, you literally earn your way to heaven by following the gospel law, then why would you ever do that if by not following the gospel law, you can still go to a heaven? If you think maybe the telestial kingdom is not very good because, well, technically on this chart, it's lower than earth, so maybe it's not actually that good. Here is the Doctrines and Covenants, which is one of the four main books of Mormonism. 
Doctrine and Covenants, chapter 76, verse 89. Actually, I'll back up to verse 88, and it says, And also the telestial receive of it the administering of angels who are appointed to minister for them, or who are appointed to be ministering spirits for them, for they shall be heirs of salvation. So I'm guessing that this says the people who live in the telestial kingdom after the resurrection, after they go to this heaven, will be ministered to by the angels because they still partake in salvation. And in verse 89, we see, And thus we saw in the heavenly vision the glory of the telestial, which surpasses all understanding. This is a common term used in Christianity. Surpassing all understanding is usually something reserved for God, as we know in Christianity and in Judaism, which refers to surpassing glory and greatness. So compared to earth, the telestial kingdom, the lowest part of heaven, is surpassing all understanding. It's so glorious that you would probably kill yourself to get there. By the gospel law of Mormonism, as long as you aren't a Mormon, you still go to heaven. So don't become a Mormon. <laughs> see how this, do you see how this is self-contradictory? And further than that, if you become a Mormon, you've now put yourself on the path where you can go to hell. You've put yourself on a path where you have to do everything exactly right, which includes going on mission, going to church all the time, getting your family involved in it, having a personal testimony, which is not what people think it is, being baptized for dead people, making sure you pay all your dues to your temple, otherwise you can't go to it anymore, and a lot of other things. So you have to follow all of these crazy things to earn your way to heaven, but if you slip up and you decide, this is, this is terrible, I'm not going to do this anymore, you go to hell. So just don't put yourself in that position in the first place and don't become a Mormon. Simple as. Just as a side note, it seems to say in the Doctrine and Covenants later down in chapter 76 that those who go to the Telestial Kingdom are somehow still those who go to hell, but then later it kind of refutes that. So here, let me just make it really clear. So talking about the people in the Telestial Kingdom, it says, these are they who suffer the wrath of God on earth. These are they who suffer the vengeance of eternal fire. These are they who are cast down to hell and suffer the wrath of Almighty God until the fullness of time when Christ shall have subdued all enemies under his feet and shall have perfected his work, when he shall deliver up the kingdom and present it unto the Father spotless, saying, I have overcome and trodden the winepress alone, even the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. So it seems that they're saying, well, those who go to the celestial kingdom partake in hell until the fullness of time. And then, but behold, and lo, we saw the glory and the inhabitants of the telestial world, that they were as innumerable as the stars in the firmament of heaven, or as the sand upon the seashore, and heard the voice of the Lord saying, These all shall bow the knee, and every tongue shall confess to him who sits upon the throne forever and ever. For they shall be judged according to their works, and every man shall receive according to his own works, his own dominion in the mansions which are prepared, and they shall be servants of the Most High. But where God and Christ dwell, they cannot come. So at the end of this vision, the people who apparently partook in the eternal, or the vengeful fire of God, the almighty wrath of God in hell, stopped doing that. And according to their own works, they'll receive their own dominion and their own mansion in heaven. And then they get to serve God forever. So not a bad deal, according to Mormonism. There's lots of crazy ideas out there and lots of people who seem to have salvation and heaven completely backwards. If you want to see more of that, check out this video here. I'll see you next time.